The ability to critically assess, to make value judgments about works of contemporary art and design is an extremely important component of the development of the artist or designer. We begin with art. It is a rare occasion when the art world actually agrees on something. In this episode, we're going to take a look at one tool to help clarify that process, to provide you with criteria and a method to determine the quality of works of art and design. Oh my god, what is that thing? <laughs> Mama, what is that? That's cool. I like that one. That one's We're awesome. going to use my piece entitled The Many Ways I Remain Defiant in the Face of Institutionalized Stupidity. Object of Defiance Number One. After Takeshi Murakami for the Broad Museum. As a way of systematically discussing how to evaluate works of contemporary art. Francis Bacon, in his Meditation Sacra in 1597, put forth the idea that knowledge itself is power. And of course we have Michel Foucault's counter, power is knowledge. Let's operate under a completely different premise. Let's think about the work of art as a kind of waveform. And let's use the way synthesizers like the Mini Moog and the Nord Lead shape sound as a cognitive tool. A synthesizer is an electronic musical instrument that generates electric signals that are converted to sound. In an electronic synthesizer, the bass electronic signal is often created with what's called an envelope generator. In ADSR synthesis, the contour of the signal is shaped by four parameters. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. It can be beneficial to critically assess, to evaluate the quality of works of visual art and design through an ADSR model. Let's slow down time and examine the first one one hundred thousandth of a second in the presence of a work of art. The absolute moment the art experience makes itself available to you through your senses. It's critically important to sensitize yourself to your initial, immediate, emotional, intellectual, phenomenological, and retinal reaction to the work. This is what we will refer to as the attack of the work. It's how you feel about the work in the first one one hundred thousandth of a second in the presence of the art experience. Feelings matter, bro. Feelings matter, bro. It's a new world, Hillary Clinton. Sensitize yourself to this moment and make note. All works of art have unique attack characteristics. Some works are fast, some slow. The attack of a work corresponds with American philosopher Charles Sanders Peirce's notion of firstness. The first is that which whose being is simply in itself. It is the sensation of having only one thing occupying your thoughts and permeating your consciousness and decay. This is the moment the object is subjected to a cognitive load, to thinking. Decay marks the moment we begin the process of intellectualizing that thing in front of us. It is when we attempt to make sense of the art experience. During decay, we track and take note of the content character and quality of our thinking as engendered by the art experience. Why is this important? Works of art are ideas made manifest. Works of art must be able to endure and more importantly, reward a sustained cognitive load. But I, I think, I think the, the issue that your piece uh, raised was that uh, there is a reality out there that artists are confronting. And art and artists uh, use art to ask some very serious and interesting questions. And you return to a series of questions that seem to be based on 
the assumption that what art is is what artists can get away with. That what art is is a, is a kind of a sham promoted by people marketing product and promoted by magazines interested in supporting the, their advertiser base of dealers. And that's what art is. But in fact, art asks far more interesting questions about the society we're living in, about our, our, our fragile lives as people living in the late 20th century. And it's those kinds of questions that your piece seems to just gloss over by... Sustain. The ability for the work to sustain cognition. Some works reward deep thinking, others punish. Understanding the nature and character of thought in the presence of the object is a key component in critical assessments of work, of determining the quality of a work. Interpretation is the process whereby a viewer makes sense of the work, intellectualizes the work, and suggests a work's aboutness. This conception of art as cognition, as important thinking, is one of the many ways that I remain defiant in the face of institutionalized stupidity. There's people who appreciate how hard it is to be an artist in an industrialized commercial world. Release is a measure of how persistent the cognitive space of the work after the viewer has left its direct presence. After the viewer has left the work, does the experience of the work remain present in the mind and to what degree? And is that presence productively problematic? Release speaks directly to the quality of a work. How fecund, how capable of producing offspring is the work. You know, work. it's really difficult to ask deep questions in the context of an auction room. That was your favorite venue. You showed these artworks up there uh, like, like, like so many uh, uh, slaves well, being that, auctioned off. That's and really your awful. question was, how much are they paying for this stuff? How can they be such fools as to pay that kind of money uh, without for a moment uh, uh, leaving the possibility that, that intelligent people are interested in it, intelligent people discourse intelligently about it because the art itself is intelligent well, work made by intelligent people. You, you made it seem like, like a commercial sideshow. All right, why is this tool valuable and in what context should it be used? Look, this is a visual mnemonic device for the practicing artist. The entire, the entire point here is to attempt to come to a deeper understanding of critical assessments of contemporary art so that we can make more powerful work. That's the point. Hand a chainsaw to a sculptor, 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 and inevitably you will get a chainsaw bear. This tool has a bias to it. We know it's a... Now, of course, it's important to point out that this is one cognitive tool. All works of art, all works of visual art, establish for themselves a system of internal logic. And it's important to cycle through a whole host of critical tools in order to come to a deeper understanding of the true nature of the object, of the work. In future episodes, we'll take a look at a number of different tools that may be appropriate for different types of work. All right, don't be shy. Reach out to your boy. Hit me up on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. And leave some comments in the comments section below. Your questions, your comments, your issues, the problems, they really do fuel further episodes. So until next time, 